when the airtight layer, whatever method is used, whatever material is used, when that airtight layer goes in, which will be at the first second fixed stage, it's in that area there. Whatever materials are used, it doesn't matter. So if it's a plaster board, or if it's an OSB board, or if it's one of these fancy membranes or whatever, it doesn't matter. But before we cover it, we put the plaster board on it or whatever we do, we skim up. Before we do that, it's really, really essential that we actually check is there any leaks. Because when the formal test comes at the end, remember it's absolutely too late at that stage to do anything about it. You'll have to be taken back down to bits and pieces. So what we've done here is we have a reasonably airtight building. I want to talk about the membranes and that, I'll do that later on. But there are definitely leaks in this building that I want to make a few points to you about. So I always begin by just reaching into my pocket here and I take out these two fellas here. I just want to show you something first of all, just to make a point at the start. So I have two balloons, there's no, nothing fancy about them. I'm going to blow this one up first of all. So you know the heat of my breath, it's around about 25 degrees Celsius and I've blown air into that thing there. Okay, happy with that? So there's no big deal about that. Now watch this one. Now, just watch. See the difference? Now the difference, if you just put out one of your hands for me there, just till I show you, just, there's a tiny little air leak in that one there, okay? So there's a tiny little air leak. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And in case you're interested, there's tiny. the hole, it's tiny. There's the hole there, okay? There it is. So the question I ask myself is, how many times in an hour would I have to blow that balloon up again? And the answer should be zero times. But I have that so that it takes a minute to go down. Now that means in an hour I'd have to blow it back up 60 times. And that in terms of our building is referred to as 60 air changes per hour. Zero air changes per hour. Now we'll never have zero, but 60 is a disaster. And it only has to be tiny little holes that make the difference. So I always find that that's the simplest way just to explain. You can see, look, it's gone now. The air has gone out of it. And if I blow it up again, it'll be gone again in another minute and, and so on. So what we're going to do now is during the construction, before it's too late, we're going to use my breath. We're going to blow up the balloon, but we're going to use this fella to do it. And we're going to find the leaks and we're just simply going to patch them. But stressing to you with the correct materials. What's the correct materials to do it? So the enemy of air tightness people is duct tape. We do not use those Mickey Mouse materials at all. We use proper materials. So it's finding out what's the correct material to do this. So I'm going to do a demonstration on air tightness leakage test for you. I'm going to use this area here. I'm going to close the inner door. We have two doors on this building here, but I'm going to use the inner one because it's a little bit more leaky. I have leaks put into it. We'll see them. And I want you to see if you can find three or four leaks for me in the construction when I do my test. So definitely you'll have a look at the door. Maybe you'll have a look at the windows, have a look at the floor. If you find leaks on the walls, then there's something wrong. You shouldn't find them. Now, so this is simply a fan. There's no big deal about this. There's no signs of it. It's just a fan that moves air. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull out the air from the building. We're going to what's called depressurize the building. So I'm going to force out the heated air. And if there's any leakage that will force cold air in through the leakage joints. And we'll go for looking for them and finding them. And I'll talk to you about how we find them in a few minutes. So the requirement in terms of an air tightness test is that you have a simple fan that moves air and you have a gauge on it which tells you that you've induced a pressure difference of 50 pascals. It's very, very simple. So I'm just going to watch that gauge arm go up there until it gets to 50. And when it gets to 50, let's go looking for leaks. It just takes a minute to get to there, even seconds to get to there. So I turn on the fan and the gauge will start to move. And I'm going to just bring up the speed until it gets to 50 pascals. Now, the fan is doing its job for me now. If I can just make the point here while it's working, and I'll shout a little bit louder because it's noisy. What you would do if you were testing a house in this situation was you'll open all the internal doors, you'll close all the external windows and doors and go looking for leaks. So now, find leaks for me, will you? Find leaks. 
So see if you can find three or four, possibly. See if you can find three or four leaks. Don't forget the floor is included. Don't forget my membranes are included. I hope you don't find any leaks there. Okay, so you may have found three or four at this stage. There's actually probably seven or eight altogether. So the door definitely, where the frame meets the door, is definitely leaky. But I don't know if you noticed that where the frame meets the wall construction, it's also leaky. I don't know if you checked that, but it is actually leaky. Yeah? So just to point out a couple of you, I'm going to say something particularly about the windows. I'm going to say something about the doors. And the joints in the floor, particularly there, and especially there. Now, they shouldn't be leaky, by the way. But just to say what happened in relation to them, we intentionally did not put down the tape on the other side to seal it. We could have put a tape on top, but we intentionally didn't. It's, it's all screwed down. But what happened is, in the drying process, the timbers just separate. So there's slight little cambers, and there's a bit of leakage coming up from the floor there and there. Typical of what your old timber ground floors would have been like in houses built up to the 1980s or thereabouts. So you'd get that leakage, except you get lots of it coming through. Now, so I want to, the fan is still popping away, he's just a little bit over 50, he's just hovering away at 50 pascals. When we came in, you may have noticed that the room was at a temperature, but you probably noticed now it's getting colder. So what's happening here is any heat that we're generating is being forced out, and cold air is being pulled in, and that's going to, and it's going to get colder, it's going to get actually chilly, and then I'll turn it off and I'll say something to you, and you'll notice the temperature going back up again, and it's getting warm again because we're interfering with the thermal process. So just to say, if I'm going to start off with this window here, if you look at the taping arrangement at the top of it, there, oh yeah, that's very nice, it's lovely and neat and tidy and so on, but it's actually not sealed to the frame. It's only the membrane that's sealed, the frame is not. So that frame is actually very leaky. Now, done on purpose, by the way, because we wanted to demonstrate this leakage to you. I don't know if you checked the sash to see if there was any leakage on the sash. So if I just make a point in relation to windows in particular, the three areas that we need to look at are where the frame meets the wall, that has to be airtight, and that's a thing that can only happen on site. And then where the sash closes to the frame, that should be done in the, in the workshop where it's made. There should be no leakage there. I don't know if you checked, but I think that one has a tiny little bit of leakage just at the bottom there, can you feel it? Just a tiny little bit, yeah. Yeah, but, but nonetheless. And then finally then, where the glass meets the frame, that ceiling unit where the glass meets the frame. So all of those things should be in order. Now there is a, a certification scheme in operation for windows now that NSAI uh, support, and it only covers the glass, the frame, and the sashes. It doesn't cover the installation of the window, which is where the weakness is. So when we get to site, we have to make it airtight. So the two windows are, it's absolutely leaky around the edges and there's a tiny little bit in the sash. There's a tiny little bit in the sash. It's not much though. So that's just to say the windows. I've already referred to the floors. But just to show you my beautiful airtight layers. I don't know if you noticed or not, but just in the corner there, just there, there's a massive leak. Somebody accidentally or on purpose burst the membrane. And we said, hey, let's leave it because it's quite leaky. Now, despite the fact, remember, that this is wind tight on the outside and there's insulation in it, still, we're still getting the leak. And just recently, someone pointed out to me that there's a tiny little leak here again, where something obviously happened. There's a tiny little leak there, but it's quite cold. You can feel the draft coming through it. So you might think everything is good, but you have to check. And that's, that's, that's what that job does for us. It's just like, let's go around, let's fix them. So it's either having a big red felt pen in your hand and putting a circle around the mark and someone comes along afterwards and fixes it or it's having a packet of tape in your pocket and, and fixing as you go. But I couldn't stress to you enough the importance of actually finding the leaks at the right time and fixing them.